what's up everyone thank you for joining me on another episode of the music reviewer podcast and my name is josh today we are not reviewing an album uh this is going to be um a, a different uh i guess series uh that i'll be trying to do we'll see if it works out uh, i'll try to do it semi-regularly uh it's going to be titled best and worst track of the week uh best and wor- best and worst track of the week basically is just um the new entries that came into the Billboard uh, Hot 100, uh, and we'll just be going over them, and uh, I'll just give a brief overview of each one, rate them by letter grade, uh, and uh, <clears throat> by the end you'll know the best and worst ones uh, that came out from this week, uh, and uh, this will be week June 13th, the week of June 13th, uh, and um, let's see, the um, this is just going to be a brief every peel my opinion. Keep in mind, a lot of this is just pop music, um, not stuff that I uh, typically am uh, constantly listening to. Um, but uh, I do enjoy uh, listening to uh, or keeping up with what's going on in the Hot 100 as well. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it'll give me a chance to talk about a lot of uh, artists I probably won't talk about much on the album review side. Um, so yeah, and. Um, Speaking of the album review side, if you're interested, the last album I covered is over uh, the recent, uh, ra- I was going to say Rage Against the Machine, um, the uh, Run the Jewels album, uh, RTG4, which came out uh, recently. Um, if you're interested in that, go ahead and check that review out. It's my most recent one. And uh, yeah, once again, thanks for listening. Um, so let's go ahead and try this out. Best and Worst Tracks of the Week. So first song on the list uh, is going to be Like That by Doja Cat featuring Gucci Man. Um, this song is pretty standard Doja Cat in my opinion. It has a nice hook uh, and it features her nice smooth uh, vocal tone that she uh, is uh, kind of distinguishes Doja Cat in my opinion. Um, however, there's some rapping on here. The rapping is pretty standard on the verses um, The Gucci Man. Um, the Gucci Man feature is basically just a typical hip hop song that has a pointless rap feature. Um, it's pretty formulaic. Um, it's not a bad song. I rated it a C uh, just because of how uh, standard and pretty, uh, I guess, <laughs> ununique the track sounded in uh, my opinion. Uh, the next uh, next artist and song is going to be One of Them Girls by Lee Bryce. Um, Lee Bryce is, of course, country. Uh, I think this is probably the first time I'm covering country on this podcast. Um, I don't hate country. I actually enjoy some of it. Uh, however, I think a lot of it on the radio, uh, like most people um, that don't listen to country um, as their primary genre, is pr- probably think most country's not very good. Um, but uh, this song by Lee Bryce um, features some pretty obvious country cliches. Um, It has decent verses in there. Um, It has nice, uh, decent composition and performance. Um, It's got, like, some guitar in there. Um, It's a little derivative of modern country, but uh, it's executed decently. Uh, It's one of Lee Bryce's better releases in a while. Um, I think his earlier work was probably his best, but um, also it features a uh, non-electric guitar guitar solo which a a non-electric guitar solo is pretty uh, unique and rare. It was pretty short, but I gave this a B. Uh, Next song uh, is by One Republic and Kygo. I guess they joined for this one, uh, titled Lose Somebody. Uh, This one um, is a typical EDM pop, uh, uh, modern pop song that is very uh, derivative of chain smokers or marshmallow i'm actually surprised marshmallow wasn't on the song uh that really i don't see anything uh, special about what kaigo did on this um and to add on top of that you have probably one of the most um stale acts in music today one republic um which uh, i'll go over the song it, it it's it features a an exposed piano track that it's in the intro um that exposed piano type uh, forced emotion in a lot of pop songs to me is a little cliche, uh, slightly annoying, um, but it builds up to this course, uh, to the, I'm sorry, it builds up to this course 
um, that has a lot more texture in the mix, um, but it ultimately does the dreaded uh, beat drop in the second chorus, and it's ultimately just piano driven. Um, and I, that's just my personal taste. I don't like pop songs that are piano driven. I do like piano as an instrument, but I, I just don't like it when it's used like this. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just very predictable. Lots of forced emotion, uh, D plus on that one. And uh, next song uh, is going to be another country song, Why We Drink by Justin Moore. This one actually surprised me. Um, this one was more of like a rock country song. It has some nice twangy guitar and a guitar hook at the very beginning. Nice, Some nice melodic bass that's in there. Um, it's a drinking anthem song. Not much to it. Um, it, it very 2000s country-esque. Uh, I, I thought it was decent. I gave it a B. Um, <clears throat> next uh, is going to be a reggaeton song. Um, Hasta que Dios diga. Featuring Anuel AA. Which I've honestly. It's the first song I've heard by this guy. Featuring Bad Bunny. Which honestly if Bad Bunny's not on the song. This song is completely uh, forgettable. And probably not on the hot one. Um, it tries to pander to these uh, the soft R and B trap reggaeton style. Uh, it has a nice, actually it does it doesn't have a nice synth sound at the beginning. It sounds like a cheap Casio keyboard, um, and it, it eventually is just a typical reggaeton song with it has some pretty mellow energy on it. Bad Bunny's Bad Bunny is on the chorus. Um, there's something some interesting embellishments that are used in the second verse. Um, it's it's a little colorful uh, overall, and um, I, th I thought with Bad Bunny in there, it's a B. Without it, it's probably not a very good song. Um, next song we'll go over is TD, uh, which is uh, by Little Yachty, Tarawak, ASAP Rocky, and Tyler, Tyler the Creator. Um, this is just a typical rap track um, where uh, each, rap each rapper goes and just spits their bars. Um, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, it has some uh, deep sub bass, um, like some mysterious type uh, production where the trap beat develops uh, through the verses with this like bell sound. Uh, the Tarawak feature is probably the best. Her flow is really good. Sounds slightly like Kendrick Lamar. Um, the little Yachty um, parts were probably the the most uninteresting. Uh, ASAP Rocky, he's probably slightly above um, Little Yachty on this. Um, Tyler the Creator's verse is definitely the other strong point on this song. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not a bad track. I give it a B plus. Check it out. Um, so <clears throat> now um, we will... Okay. Yeah, we got a few more. There's a lot this week. Um, next trap is going to be a Low Cash. Um, one Big Country Song. This one is a pretty generic pop country song um, that has typical tropes about life, hence the name of the song. Um, it's very inoffensive, cliche songwriting. The chorus has some gang vocal-likeness to it. Um, instrumentation and performance sounds copy and paste. Literally, I feel like this was recorded by a studio band and uh, it could have gone to anyone. Um, <laughs> and uh, the even the breakdown in the bridge is terrible. That could have been maybe the song Saving Grace, but no. Uh, just not a very good track. I gave it a D. Um, next one's actually another country song, uh, another country track. Uh, this one's pretty good. Um, surprised me. It's uh, Got What I Got um, by Jason Aldean. Uh, this one is... It, it doesn't pander to the modern contemporary uh, country... Um, country cliches and norms it's has a weird trap r&b beat at the beginning and it's typical jason ld vocal delivery and style has some reverb on it but um it's over this compound time signature a slower tempo some nice and shiny bright embellishments in there um, the emotional parts are executed pretty well um, it's a little cliche but overall it's not bad um i like that it sounds a little bit different from what's being played on most uh country radio today so yeah b plus on that one um next one is tkn uh it's uh featuring rosalia and travis scott 
Um, it sounds like a Rosalia song, which um, I guess uh, I should give a brief um, introduction to Rosalia. She is a Spanish uh, pop star that is emerging and has some critical acclaim. Um, she uh, does her uh, two styles primarily between like the flamenco, um, the traditional Spanish style music, um, and then she also has like her pop side, which her pop side is getting a lot more attention. But she is quite talented. She has a great voice. Um, this track, I think it's trying to make it to um, maybe the external uh, or the I'm sorry. <laughs> It's trying to make it to the uh, the Spanish radio stations here in the U.S. that just play nothing but reggaeton because it's over a reggaeton beat. Um, there's some light harpsichord like melody uh, chord structure throughout the track. That's pretty much the whole entire gist of it. Um, she there's this Spanish hook that Travis Scott sings over that I found interesting. I don't know. I don't think Travis Scott sings Spanish, but. Um, yeah, it's 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 an interesting track. Overall, it didn't sit with me too well because it to me it sounds a little bare, but um, and it it just sounds like it's trying to be a hit on the radio, honestly. But uh, it's a C. Check it out if you like those artists. <clears throat> Next song I have here is "Tell Me You Love Me" by Juice World featuring Trippy Red. Um, this one has a nice, interesting syncopated bass guitar line. Um, intro. It sounds like bass guitar. It could be guitar, but it has some of course effect on it. Um, and it's used throughout the track. It has the the raw, dark emo trap aesthetic, trying to be pretty emotional. Um, it sounds also like it tries to incorporate a little bit of dance hall elements. Could be wrong there, but um, the trippy red part, in my opinion, was boring and predictable. Um, I'm not a huge fan of trippy red. Um, I don't really see the appeal of him. He's he doesn't execute um, at the level of a lot of rappers that are doing the same thing he does. And I guess I'm going to try to say trippy red in my opinion is kind of like an industry, um, I guess maybe not plant, but just a, just an industry tool. He's has his image and that's what sells. Um, but uh, I thought it was a good song overall. Um, rest in peace to juice world on that one. Uh, I gave that one a B minus uh, next track. Um, before we get into the worst and best is going to be Sour Candy by Lady Gaga and Blackpink. This was on Lady Gaga's new album. Um, I'm on the fence about reviewing that. I don't think I will, but I generally I thought that album was quite good. Um, this track in particular has an accessible hook and house beat as it's underlined with a bouncy keyboard synth. There's a memorable hook on it. It's a little corny in the lyrics. It's just a basically a metaphor to candy um and uh I, I don't really know what the black pink feature is really doing for the song they're a k-pop band obviously yeah, this song isn't in korean either so uh b on that one so um for the end of this podcast uh these are going to be the worst and best tracks of the week um just so we can leave on a positive note we'll go uh, into the worst track of the week um on this list of new entries to the billboard hot 100 um the worst track of the week is one beer um by hardy featuring loren elena and devin dawson these are just uh up and coming country singers i think they featured on the song together um just because they're probably trying to promote their own uh, careers um, and figured this song would maybe become a hit. Um, this is, uh, yes, a country song, and uh, I'll go over mainly who Hardy is. He is a Nashville, uh, primarily he's a songwriter that um, writes a lot of hits for, I think, bro country bands um, and artists, and uh, he's trying to take off on his own solo career. He has a decent voice, but this songwriting is, it's just corny. It's its a song about drinking um, and uh, a, uh, a one beer turning into a one night stand um, that leads into this relationship that ends up with a kid, um, but it tries to make it into this cute, like, uh, <laughs> this cute mishap that happened, but really it's a pretty fucked up situation. Um, and 
it, it sounds like a Kane Brown ripoff. That's probably the best way I can put it. The mix is terrible in the production. You can barely hear the hi hats. Um, there's some weird distorted synth in the chorus. There's really nothing memorable about the features either. In my opinion, the song is just a very produced, um, simple country song that is trying to get it, trying to get it high in the charts um, for the summertime. There's really not much to it. Uh, that's why it's the worst track of the week. Um, I really hope no one listens to this song because it's really not that good. Um, and finally, the best track of the week. This is another track off of Lady Gaga's newest album. Alice uh, is the name of the track. Um, this track here, um, it's actually the first song, I think, on her new album. Uh, it has a really memorable chorus and hook. Um, just a really great performance by Lady Gaga. has a very convincing house beat that gives the track energy. Um, it is filled with Lady Gaga tropes, but, I mean... Why wouldn't you want that from a Lady Gaga track? Um, and it has kind of like this EDM 90s flair to it, um, kind of nostalgic sounding too. Um, and it is the best song of the week. Yeah, so overall, uh, it was, I think I picked a pretty uh, long week or filled week to start this series because um, this, uh, this had a lot of songs and a lot of country, um, a lot of country. Um, but yeah, um, I'll try to do this semi-regularly, um, if you enjoy, give it, um, give it a listen, um, or give this series a listen. Also, I'll be trying to review some more music here soon. Um, I'm kind of debating what to review next. I was debating on maybe the new Heinz album, uh, or the new, uh, Rolling Blackouts Coastal Fever album as well, but, uh, <laughs> I, I just haven't been able to uh, write the Rolling Blackouts Coastal Fever review. Um, I, I like the band, but I don't know if I'm going to have anything too positive to say either. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, there's a lot of music being released. So, um, if you made it this far, thanks for listening. My name is Josh. I'm the music reviewer, and I'll see you guys later.